In this video, I'll show you how you can have more than three failure captions per question slide. Okay, you may have encountered this issue before. If you have a question slide where you wish to give your learners four, five, six, seven tries, or even infinite tries, you are limited to three failure captions. Now, you can, of course, use advanced answer option to provide a unique feedback caption for each one of your distractors in a multiple choice question slide. But if you want to progressively give them a little bit more information each time they try, you're going to want to increase the number of failure captions just to give them a little bit more. Uh, in this video here, we'll show you exactly how you can do that using variables and advanced actions. So you can see here, actually, there's the failure messages that we're talking about in the quiz panel in Adobe Captivate. The maximum I can choose is three. In this particular example, I'm giving them five tries to get this knowledge check multiple choice correct. So in this case here, I'm going to get rid of these failure messages. I'm not going to use those whatsoever. And in this case, instead, what I've done is I've created a multi-state object that's going to take care of all of those different messages. So as you can see, I've called it feedback caption. And you can quickly see here, if we go into state view, all the different messages that I've set up. So there's incorrect one, where I tell them this is the first attempt, second attempt, so on, right up to the fifth attempt, where we give them the final click anywhere or press Y to continue. And how I achieve that, by the way, is hidden on my timeline, but also hidden um, to the learners as well, is this click anywhere smart shape, which is set up to be completely transparent and it's not visible in output by default. It kind of works on quiz question slides. As long as they click anywhere where it's basically blank, they will be able to, of course, continue to the rest of the slide. Pressing Y will also work as well because we've actually set that up with a shortcut key to work with the Y key on your keyboard. I'm going to hide this on my timeline because, of course, I still need to work on this slide. And here's my caption here. And I'm just going to align the correct and incomplete captions to be stacked right over top of that there. First thing we need to do is we need to set up a couple of variables. So let's go into the project drop down menu and select variables. We'll add new. And the first variable we're going to create is current tries. I'm going to set that to be an initial value of one. But like I said, every time we arrive on the slide, we're going to reset it back to one anyway. So it's just a precaution. So go ahead and hit save and we'll add new and we'll call this next one delay. And I'm going to just pick a number for right now. Let's say three seconds and we'll go ahead and save that. So that'll be used throughout our other advanced action multiple times. So let's go ahead and hit close here. Next, we're going to build our advanced actions. So like I said, the first one we're going to deal with is simply reset tries. And this will be done on enter of this particular slide. So very simply, we're just going to assign our current tries with a literal value of one, our first try. So let's save that as an action. Click OK. And we'll go ahead and create our new advanced action at the same time that we're in here. So I'm going to call this advanced action incorrect attempt. And the first thing we're going to take care of is the fifth incorrect attempt. So we're going to start with five and rule that out as a possibility first. So we'll go with incorrect zero five. And this will be a conditional advanced action. And we're going to look at our variable that we created current tries. We'll see if it is equal to the literal value of five. And if it is, we are going to increment our current tries 
by a value of one. It almost doesn't matter, but I'm going to keep this structure here because uh, I'm going to replicate it for the other attempts as well. We're going to change the state of our feedback caption to the fifth item here, the incorrect five state here. And we're going to show our click anywhere smart shape. Uh, and we'll just do that by show click anywhere. And that way they can click anywhere or press Y to proceed with the course. Now I'm going to duplicate this and now we're going to develop uh, incorrect 04. This would be a long advanced action to write if I had to write all of this from scratch. So thankfully the duplicate decision is there to allow us to replicate this and make just a couple of small changes here. So we'll check to see if the current tries are equal to four. We'll still increment the current tries by one. You can see this is after uh, five. So five won't be affected by what happens here. We're gonna change the incorrect to incorrect four. We're not gonna show the click anywhere here. So I'm gonna delete that. But we are going to delay the next action by the variable we created for the delay. So however many seconds that's set for. And then we're going to change the state of our feedback caption back to normal, which is essentially a transparent shape at that point. And now we can duplicate this for incorrect three. And we'll check to see if our variable is equal to three. And if it is, we're still going to increment the tries by one. We are going to show incorrect three and everything else remains the same. We'll duplicate this now for incorrect two. Check to see if our try is equal to two. And we'll show the incorrect two message. And now we can duplicate it again for incorrect number one. So if it's equal to the literal value of one, which will be the first incorrect attempt, we will show the first incorrect message and that's it. So we can save this as an action, click OK and click close. So let's go to the properties inspector of our slide on enter. We're going to execute advanced actions and we're going to choose the reset tries advanced action. That's going to run every time the learner arrives on this slide. Now you might be thinking that we would run the other advanced action from the last attempt on the quiz panel. But in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to use the advanced answer option, which is available if I select each of my distractors one at a time and select advanced answer option. We're not going to show feedback, but we are going to execute our advanced action and that's incorrect attempt. We're going to do the same thing for the other distractors as well. And we're pretty much good to go. So let's go ahead and preview this project and see if it works as expected. Okay, so let's get a wrong answer. That's not correct. This was your first attempt. Oh, so three seconds might be not long enough. So let's close this down, go back to our variables window. And again, you know, the advantage here is because we have that delay on multiple tabs in our advanced action, I don't have to update that value in four or five different locations. I'm thinking five seconds now that I've seen it might be more appropriate. So let's go ahead and update that variable to have a value of five. And we'll go ahead and we'll do a preview again and see how that works. Okay, so let's get a wrong answer. Okay, this was your first attempt to answer this question. Please make another selection. Kim Campbell, and we can just do this until we've exhausted all of our attempts. That's my third attempt. Let's try Paul Martin. That was your fourth attempt. And we'll exhaust our attempts now. Submit. And of course, what's happening, you don't see it, but on the slide now is my Smart shape used as a button, which is completely transparent. So I can literally press Y to continue and it goes on to the next slide or I could have clicked anywhere.
If you thought this video was useful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific need. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.